It makes sense to me that our sleeping and waking would be controlled by the body clock. But since Sieff's experiment, scientists are discovering that time plays a much bigger part than we'd ever realized. And over the next 24 hours, I'm having a series of tests to find out. You must be uh, Benita, right? Yes, I am, yes. I see. So you'll be the one administering this battery of medieval tortures, I understand. Hopefully not that bad, <laughs> Michio. Now, what we're going to be doing today is looking at all the things within the body which change across the day, but aren't as obvious as things like the sleep-wake cycle, which everybody knows. Pop that into your mouth, chew on it for a bit, see how far forward... Benita's going to look for the effects of time in everything. My stress hormones, okay, thanks very much. my flexibility, as hard as you can. even my muscle strength. You tell me when it hurts. Oh. Begin to hurt, stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> time runs through every aspect of our bodies. According to Benita, it affects just about everything we do. Throughout the day, my physical performance seems to be changing dramatically. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in our descent and will shortly be landing. So at last, 24 hours after the test began, I'm going to find out just what was going on. Hello, Michio. Nice to see you again. Right, hi. So, shall we have a look at some of the results? Yes, I'm we got dying the other to find day? out what happened. Right. After being put through the ringer. <laughs> well, that's right. So, we'll start off with the saliva samples that we took. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that was to look at cortisol? How can I forget? Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is a hormone related to stress and it has a daily rhythm. Now, now, look at that. I would have thought it would be at the bottom. You know, you're rested in the morning, you're groggy. I would have thought that you're unstressed. Yes, maybe your stress levels aren't high, but the, the levels of cortisol are high, mm -hmm. so that when you get up in the morning, you should be wide awake and able to go I and do see. things. So this is basically our evolutionary cup of coffee then, right? Yes, that's right, yes. <laughs> this is what gets right. us going in the morning. Yes, it helps. I see. It helps uh -huh. indeed. Mm -hmm. so it turns out that almost all our body processes follow predictable cycles. I mean, you've got a very they are controlled by time. Okay. So tell me now, how did I do on the pain test? You can see a difference between the morning and the afternoon. Yeah, quite dramatic. Look at that. Yeah. Why is it that the pain threshold changed in my body during the day? It's quite dramatic. Yes, it is. And it's because the nerves are less sensitive later on in the day, mm -hmm. so that it takes more to excite them to send the message mm -hmm. to the brain to say, ouch. <laughs> well, if we get the strength up, you can see here what uh -huh. we were actually measuring. Because and all these different processes are governed by one master clock, mm -hmm. a central timer that orchestrates every bit of our biology. Pulling was it was using your leg muscles and your back muscles. Mm -hmm. So all of these parameters that we've measured today, the rhythms are all controlled from one small group of cells which make up something called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is buried right in the middle of the brain. And this is where the master clock is, deep within our brains. A cluster of only 20,000 cells, no bigger than a pea. An organ of time that synchronizes every process in the body. Benita's experiment made me realize how utterly fundamental the body clock is. If it goes wrong, we're thrown completely out of sync with the entire world around us. In the middle of the night, at 3 a.m., when most people are sleeping soundly. Two inhabitants of Liberty, North Carolina are starting their day. My daughter and I 
have always gotten up early. For us, that means uh, we get up our normal getting up time or rising time is about 3, 3.30. Um, the oddity about it is that for us, sometimes it doesn't even matter how late we've been up. The night before, we will still get up at that same time. Clay McQuarrie and his daughter Bethany wake up at this time, day in, day out. But they didn't choose this lifestyle. They have an incredibly rare disease that forces them to run on a different schedule in the lonely hours of the morning. For Clay and Bethany, it's like living in a different time zone. And biologically, they are. Yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> Recently, they've discovered their condition is caused by an abnormal body clock. I think I could hear you. It's called ASPS, or Advanced Sleep Phase Syndrome. Approximately two years ago, that's when we found out about uh, what ASPS is and what it involves, what it's like. My dad, he uh, grew up as a dairy farmer, and so he got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and milked cows. So for him, ASPS worked out beautifully, um, you know, to be able to get up early and to do that. Uh, so when we were growing up, I guess I kind of wondered if I just kind of inherited it from him as a dairy farmer. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't get past the first formation, you know, he had to kind of stand there. I think Bethany and I are very close. I think because we've had those early mornings together all of her life that I would think I have a, a closer relationship than I would think to some fathers because they haven't been able to have that time together. Like Mr. Owen says, it's a great day to be a marching blue jay. <laughs> <laughs> but ASPS doesn't affect the whole family. Talk to us after the game. Clay and Bethany have it, but Clay's wife, Janelle, and their son, Casey, don't. And this means that their family is divided in time. There's been times when I wished, you know, we would kind of function the same as other families. It does make it hard when you're wanting to be together and if we want to do something in the evening. So I think we, we intentionally plan to do things mid-morning, uh, we go to matinees for movies instead of going to the evening movies, but we just don't schedule a lot in the evening. Only a handful of families in the world are known to have ASPS. And their DNA is helping scientists to unpick the very basis of our body clock. It turns out that our body's time is controlled by just a few genes. And a single mutation on a single gene is enough to cause it to go completely adrift. Studying these genes has revealed something quite extraordinary. These same few body clock genes seem to be present in all plants and animals. And this suggests they must be one of life's most fundamental building blocks. For me, I find it absolutely astounding that the biological clocks ticking away in my body are about the same